Welcome to Creating Wealth with Jason Hartman. During this program, Jason is going to tell you some really exciting things that you probably haven't thought of before and a new slant on investing. Fresh new approaches to America's best investment that will enable you to create more wealth and happiness than you ever thought possible. Jason is a genuine, self-made, multi-millionaire who not only talks the talk, but walks the walk. He's been a successful investor for 20 years and currently owns properties in 11 states and 17 cities. This program will help you follow in Jason's footsteps on the road to financial freedom. You really can do it. And now, here's your host, Jason Hartman, with the complete solution for real estate investors. Welcome to the Creating Wealth Show. This is your host, Jason Hartman, and this is episode number 192, fast approaching that 200 mark. So a couple of things to talk about today before we get into our interview on our main topic. Number one is, have you been following the news in economics lately? Inflation is really, really starting to rear its ugly head, but that head isn't so ugly if you're following our plan. It's actually quite pleasant because inflation will increase the value of your packaged commodities, not so much land, because we are in an era right now of asset deflation and monetary inflation. Actually, we're in an era of massive monetary inflation, and other countries are even starting to balk at it. Obama recently attended the G20 summit, and it looks like 19 other countries did not want to spend themselves into Keynesian oblivion like our president does. (laughs) So it's interesting. But look, we have the right plan for an irresponsible government and a government that just really seems determined to beat up the value of the dollar. And and lately, what have they been doing? Well, certainly creating a heck of a lot of inflation where we've got inflation on everything we need and deflation on many things we want. So the optional parts of life, deflation mostly, and the necessary parts of life, very, very significant inflation, no question about it. And that leads to some very good things for people following our plan. And as a measuring stick for this, just look at what's going on with the precious metals. Of course, we don't believe that precious metals are a very good strategy. They're better than dollars, certainly, but they're not an offensive strategy. They're nothing more than a defensive strategy. So again, our strategy, long-term fixed rate debt combined with packaged commodities, little rental houses are the very best thing. They have universal need. And you're really, when you're investing in them, what are you really buying? You're investing in copper, petroleum products, energy, glass, steel, lumber, labor, and assembled something everybody needs, which is one of the basic human needs. The three are food, clothing, and you guessed it, shelter. So a lot of good things coming our way, and we are really seeing significant, significant signs of inflation. Six months ago, a year ago, there was a debate about it, and I was even questioning my own outlook on the future, but I am not questioning that much anymore. So don't be fooled. When it comes to life's necessities, inflation is here. And I've been buying properties lately. I purchased a a 10-unit building with some of our investors are probably listening now. How are you? (laughs) Elton and Danson. And we did that in St. Robert, Missouri, which is just a great market. And then I've purchased a couple properties in Indianapolis lately, and I am doing uh, 50% in one in Atlanta, which is the subject of today's show mostly. Some good buys out there, and I'm just dying to get my hands on everything I can. And if you need a cash partner to put up cash on any deals, just talk to our investment counselors here and just tell them that you want to invest with Jason. And Jason, yours truly, Jason, not to talk about myself in the third person, is very interested in doing that because I think it's an excellent time to be doing so in the markets we recommend. Of course, many markets are still going to experience declines. And why will they experience declines? Well, they'll experience declines because those are the markets where you're really buying real estate. And again, I've told you this before, I don't like real estate. I know that sounds kind of odd, but what I like is packaged commodities. When people say real estate, they're really investing in two things, aren't they? They're investing in land, and they're investing in the improvement, the structure, the house, the apartment building sitting on that land. Now, I like 
the structure. I like the commodities that make up that structure, but I don't very much like real estate right now. And that's why I don't touch high land value markets, like markets in California, the Northeast, even some parts of Florida still, they haven't come down quite enough yet. And we are putting together, by the way, a huge white paper, a forecast report, and it looks like it's going to be about 70 pages long this year. So the white paper will be a really interesting product this year. We've really created some new methodologies and some really interesting stuff there. So package commodities investing, long-term fixed rate investment grade debt. It's a winning combination and everyone can tell now that we have inflation coming. So it's pretty darn obvious. The writing is on the wall. So be ready for it. It happens suddenly and it can really, really affect your financial life if you're not prepared for it. Be sure that you contact one of our investment counselors by visiting jasonhartman.com and get yourself pre-approved so that when a property in any one of our markets comes available that makes sense for you, you'll be ready to take advantage of it. As I mentioned, I've been making offers and buying properties lately, and it is not easy to get these properties like it it was when the market was slower. Things are busy. Properties are hard to get. They do not stay available very long. Many times there are multiple offers on them. We're not talking about California or some of these overpriced markets. People are sensing a bottom. They are sensing very good buys, at least an effective bottom in many of these other markets that make sense. So be sure you get pre-approved proved you're not obligated to buy, you're not committed, but you're ready if the opportunity comes along that makes sense. Also, Brittany developed a great little survey, and we'd love to get some feedback from our listeners by going to jasonhartman.com slash survey. That's jasonhartman.com slash survey. And give us your feedback on the show, on the content, on anything else, what you'd like to see more of, less of. We'd love to hear from you, get some more feedback. And also, I want to announce Frugal Fridays. I may have mentioned that on a prior show. It's something new we started, and you can get some great deals on our website, on our product, on our events, our services at jasonhartman.com. So be sure to sign up on our email list at the website and also visit every Friday to find the special on that day. These are one day only specials and they're different every week. And this Friday, for example, you can save $250. That's more than a third you can save on the Creating Wealth Encyclopedia, which includes about 100, I believe it's 120 hours of audio content, and I think it's about 1,200 pages of printed content. So (laughs) again, that's just a phenomenal opportunity. We only run those specials on the Frugal Fridays, so take advantage of that. Of course, our Meet the Masters event is coming up next March. Take advantage of early bird pricing now. Also, if you are not reading our blog, and by the way, if you're a Kansas City owner and you own a property in the Kansas City market, you must read the article on our blog where we outed a property manager. It's pretty interesting. So make sure you read that article. You can subscribe to our blog via RSS feed so you get all of the updates. It's totally free and there's some great content on the blog. So take advantage of that as well and make sure you're on our mailing list. So anyway, without further ado, let's get to today's topic where we're going to talk about Atlanta and give you some of the latest updates on that market. We've got our local market specialist, otherwise known as our LMS, local market specialist, Eric, who will be with us in just less than 60 seconds. We'll be right back with that interview. Want to know what you've missed in the Creating Wealth series? Well, here's your opportunity with Jason's five-book set, That's shows 1 through 100 through digital download. You save $288 by getting this five-book set. Learn all of the advanced strategies for wealth creation. For more details, go to jasonhartman.com. It's my pleasure to welcome Eric to the show. He is one of our vendors from the great city of Atlanta, Georgia, and we have been doing a lot of business with him. We have some very, very happy clients that have taken advantage of these excellent foreclosure properties, and I think you'll enjoy hearing more. Eric, welcome. Great. Thank you so much for having me. Well, my pleasure. So we've been doing a lot of business over the past year, and it's been a great relationship with you and our clients and our company. And tell us a little bit, maybe first we'll start with sort of the macro perspective as some of the opportunities in real real estate in general today, and specifically the greater Atlanta area, and then we'll drill down into more specific areas and and, and transactions. Sure. Well, the Atlanta market in general, we're extremely fortunate 
on a couple of fronts. One is that we've still got a really large influx of people coming in from the north because the prices here are cheaper and I guess they like the climate a bit better. And then the areas that we specifically focus on have a good bit of foreclosures still, which allows us to, to buy and then, of course, renovate and sell to investors at a very great price. But additionally, the rental rates are still holding up quite well. So the price to rent ratio is is still extremely strong here in Atlanta. Even in this difficult job climate, we've, we've had no problems finding tenants, which I guess you can attest to based on, on prior clients that we've had. We definitely have a good history with you and getting properties leased up quickly, keeping them leased, so it's been very good. More about the Atlanta market in particular, I mean employment, resources, things like that. Anything else you want to mention there, and we'll go into specific areas of Atlanta. Sure. Well, one, one huge thing that we've got going for us is a, a low corporate tax in the city, and so there are a ton of large companies, and it's very diverse as far as what what we've got, like UPS and Coca-Cola, Bell South, which is a phone company. FedEx is based out of here. You've got a lot of universities and hospitals that are based out of the Atlanta market. So we've got a very diverse economy, and at the same time, we've got a lot of large corporations. So employment, I think, will always be pretty strong here, given that dynamic of Atlanta. And then, as we talked about earlier, the price point here is, is extremely strong. So both those reasons, I say, are probably the the main reason that we like the market that we're in, I think it will continue to to remain strong for us. Sure. Now, when you talk about Atlanta, I mean, talk about a large, sprawling city. It's like Houston or the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. I mean, these are big, giant, giant cities, and there are really uh, just a a whole bunch of little micro-markets within such a large metropolis. What areas of Atlanta do you like specifically and why? We focused on an area primarily in, in the county called DeKalb County a little northeast of the city. And I mean, the primary reason that we, we like it so much is because the, the price points are so strong given the rent ratios. That's probably the, the number one reason. There's some other uh, good pockets in Atlanta that are maybe south or north of where we are, but this has the, the best bang for your buck as far as being able to find the most properties at, at a good price point with good rent ratios. So that's the primary thing we like. The school systems are, are fine. They're, they're not probably the best in Atlanta, but at the same time, they're certainly solid. And, you know, we feel good about them as far as long-term holding on to properties. The properties are also a little bit newer. Occasionally we'll come across one that's built in the 70s, but most of them are 80s and newer, and typically investors seem to like that. Excellent. And what particular cities or suburbs within DeKalb County? Sure. The uh, primary, we, we actually deal with about four primarily. Uh, one is called Ellenwood, and that's the furthest south. We've also got one called Lithonia, which is just north of Ellenwood. And then you've got Stone Mountain and Decatur which are kind of parallel to each other, but the cater would be a little bit west of Stone Mountain. So they all kind of connect, but they're all uh, in a straight up and down line, I guess is the best way to put it. And why do you pick those specific? I mean, we've done a lot of business. You've placed a lot of our investors in those areas, but why do you pick those areas specifically? We think that the neighborhoods within the communities are strong enough to where long-term People are going to be doing very well and very happy with the product. There, there are safer areas. I mean, you can get some areas in Atlanta, like southwest of the city, for example, that are very inexpensive to, to purchase investment property, but then you've got a lot of crime issues. So we try to find areas that we feel crime wouldn't be an issue, and at the same time, you're still getting a great cash flow opportunity. So those, those four cities offer the best bang for your buck from that standpoint. And Eric, tell us about sort of a typical deal, if you would, what a client can expect. I mean, you have got some fantastic before and after pictures that you've shown our group in terms of the rehab you do. I mean, it's really just amazing. Talk about ugly duckling houses that are just, when they're when they're finished, they look phenomenal. I mean, just a night and day difference. Yeah, I appreciate it. We, we certainly do put a lot of uh, effort into it. Basically, from the, the beginning, there's a couple different ways we buy properties. One is just getting an REO, which is a real estate-owned property where the bank actually owns the property. We also go to auctions to, to pick up properties. Additionally, we'll go to the courthouse steps every once in a while to pick up properties. And so those are the three kind of primary methods that we use. And we're always out on the warpath trying to find more properties because the demand has been has been pretty good, thankfully. So that's the acquisition part. And then from there, we immediately start the renovation process. And the renovation, on average, takes about a month to maybe five weeks, something like that. And from that point on, we work with with buyers on inspecting the property and appraising it to make sure everything is 
lined up as far as values, and then use the, a simple close on the property from there. And I just want to say to all of our listeners, they can see before and after pictures, some really cool ones on our Facebook page. So if you look for the Platinum Properties Investor Network Facebook page, you can see some great before and after pictures. So uh, it, it really is quite a contrast. So first of all, let's talk about acquisition. In terms of acquisition, you're buying them a lot of times at the auction or on the courthouse steps. Talk about that process for a moment, if you would, because I think one of the big sort of myths out there in real estate investing is so many people watch these late night TV infomercials and uh, all of these guys make it look so easy to do that. And all of our listeners should understand that you have a business, you have a real company with real resources and full-time people who are investigating these properties beforehand. It's a little bit dangerous to just go buy properties at an auction or on the courthouse steps, isn't it? Oh yeah, you, you definitely need to know what you're doing. I mean, I mean, just a, the courthouse steps, for example, if you don't effectively run title search, you can have liens that you're responsible for if you buy it for a couple hundred thousand dollars. So yeah, it's, it's probably not as easy as it looks. We've got a contractor who oversees all of our, our renovations. We've basically got five crews who goes out and looks at the properties with us to review the, the different structural issues and things that we may encounter to make sure all that's sound. We've got two of us on staff who are basically going out and, and looking almost 24-7 for properties. So, I mean, we look at a lot of properties in, in order to buy five, six, seven, eight a month. I would also say that we know pretty much every street in the areas that we look at, so we're able to be much more efficient than I would say the the average show would be looking at properties. I would definitely second that motion. And you really do the screening for our clients, our investors, and, and we do further screening beyond your screening. Some of your deals, we don't necessarily recommend all of the ones you give to us. So you screen, and then we screen, and then our investor sees what properties we like after that. And that's one of the really important things I want listeners to understand, that buying properties at foreclosure sale is a very professionalized business. It's not that it can't be done effectively, but you need to really be in that business and really know that market like the back of your hand. You need to know how to do title searches properly because, as you mentioned, someone can acquire a property with a whole bunch of liens against the properties, mechanics liens, all kinds of crazy stuff can go on. And I just think, Eric, I, I hear that all the time. People will attend one of my educational events and they'll come up to me at the break and, well, I bought this package on TV I saw. And they, they say you can just go out to the foreclosure sales and and some of the games that take place there are really amazing. Like the people that regularly attend those sales, the pros, they will intentionally let a new person come in and acquire a property that they know is a bad deal because they want to make sure they don't come back and they want to get that, that potential competitor out of the business. Or the other thing they'll do is they'll bid properties up to a point and then let the other person have it and the other person will end up overpaying for the property. So anything more on how professionalized that business has become, the, the foreclosure business? Yeah, it's, oh, it's actually interesting because I, I actually go out there every month and we, we know everybody who, uh, who is a, a constant at the different auctions. So it is interesting to see the d dynamic between people who really don't know what they're doing and it's pretty easy to spot, if we're being honest, versus those of us who are all usually looking at the same properties. So it's, uh, it, it is an interesting. I'd also say one other common thing that is, is definitely a usual mistake area is the renovation. For one, doing it correctly, but also the amount that people misjudge how much a renovation, if done correctly, actually costs is dramatic. Most new people are... I would say 30 or 40% under where they should be. So they underestimate the cost of improvements, and then they find themselves maybe they overpay for the property and overpay for the improvements. Now, why do they do that? Is there any particular reason they underestimate the improvement cost? And I think also they underestimate the time it takes. If they don't have a machine really built to manage construction and manage contractors or manage subcontractors, the delays that occur can really just eat up money so quickly. Yeah, no doubt. I and mean, we're also paying cash. Of course, a lot of people who finance, you've got that aspect of things. But yeah, I would just say that, I mean, we are about as efficient as you can be. We buy everything in bulk, the flooring. Um, I mean, everything we do is in bulk and as, as, and as expensive as it, it can be. Then we still miss stuff. So, I mean, it's just basic things. You, you walk in a house that looks pretty clean, and all of a sudden, you know, your AC unit's gone. That's $4,000. The roof, maybe it looks kind of okay to you, but you think you're impaired. You know, that's another four or $5,000. So things 
add up quickly if you if you miss them for sure. Well, talk to us a little bit about the rehab. What do you typically do to a property? Like maybe give us sort of the easy story and the horror story because as you said, you're in this business, you've been in this business a long time and, and you guys make mistakes too. But when you make a mistake, you eat it. Our investor doesn't eat it because you're giving them a turnkey property, right? Correct. Yep. The price is already done before we renovate the property. So there is no change in the price. So you've really got to know what you're doing to make sure that you don't underestimate the cost of repairs and you build that into the pricing properly, right? Absolutely. We've, we've made a, a few mistakes here and there, but thankfully we do enough volume to where we can eat it and, and, uh, and be fine. But from the typical renovation standpoint, always looking to, on the outside, paint the house and add some type of decor to make it more attractive to a tenant. And then from an appraisal standpoint, that always helps to just little stuff like landscaping, adding shutters, adding a portico or whatever it may be. We always try to, to make it look a good bit better so you can really tell that we've done a lot of work in the house. Of course, the major stuff like the HVAC and the roof and things along those lines, if they're uh, they're suspect, we always try to make those in very good condition when, when someone's buying them. So if the AC unit's like 15 years old, for example, 99% of the time we're going to replace that. Inside and outside, you're looking at anywhere from about fifteen to forty thousand, probably. We always put new floors in, new countertops, paint cabinets, obviously the paint and carpet stuff. But it's a little stuff you don't see, like the plumbing and electrical things that I think we go above and beyond what a lot of rehabbers do out there. And in terms of the rehab you do, you offer a warranty for our investor, correct? That's correct. So anything that any specific repairs we do, we offer a one-year warranty on, and we actually give a scope of the work that we do so that everybody's aware and everybody's on the same page. And then, of course, we recommend having an inspector come in at the tail end just to confirm that what we did was good work and see if he spots anything else. And how does a typical deal work? Talk to us about the logistics of a, of a transaction, what you're doing and what our client is doing as the investor to acquire the property. Sure. So we'll, we'll purchase a property. And what I'll do is when that happens, I'll run it through you guys. And then if you guys approve, put it on the website. So that'll be on jasonhartman.com. Correct. Yep. And so I'll put it up there. And then during the the process, we're actually going to be starting the rehab very soon thereafter. Even if it's not sold, we're, we're still renovating the property. But assuming someone wants to purchase the property at that point, we uh, basically send a contract over and there's a 24-hour period to look over the contract, review it, and then send it back or it, you can no longer reserve it, I guess, until after you get that squared away. From that standpoint, I will give you before pictures of the property and I will also give you the line item rehab so everybody would be exactly aware of whatever renovations need to be done. And then midway through the renovation, I will send some pictures just to show the progress and and, uh, things along those lines. About that time frame, I recommend contacting an insurance agent and then as well as an inspector to line them up for when the rehab is complete so that we can go ahead and move forward with the closing assuming everything goes well. And how do people know that the numbers that you put when you upload to our website at jasonhartman.com, you put in projected expenses, you put in projected rental income. I should just remind investors that these are all our projections, of course. How do you know they're they're going to come true in real life or, or be close to accurate? <laughs> I guess I, I can't guarantee it, but I would say that that's just experience. We have a property management within our company, and so we manage all the properties, so I know what the rental rates are going to be for different homes in different areas. So there's very very little guesswork to that. That being said, by the way, I do offer a a two-month rental guarantee. So from the time that you close on the property, there's a two-month rental guarantee where we pay the rent no matter what. I also guarantee if I put, for example, 1,000 in rent on the pro forma, I'll guarantee that number for one year. So you've got the two-month rental guarantee. And then uh, from that point on, if the tenant is paying 950, for example, I'll pay the difference between that 950 and 1,000. For the remaining part of the year. That's fantastic. So if there was a $600 deficit, and that's the $50 a month, if it rents for $50 less, then you'll guarantee that for the first year. So they'll have their full $1,000 as you projected, correct? Exactly. Oh, exactly. excellent. And so as far as the rest of the numbers, I, I've, uh, I mean, you look up the tax numbers on the DeKalb County website. So I'm able to, to do that just right off their website. So that's that's easy enough. And then insurance is is very close on most homes. It's anywhere from five to six hundred dollars, depending on the size of the home. So it's usually pretty accurate. There's very little guesswork, really, except for the the rent rate. But because we're so experienced with that, it's it's usually pretty close. Super. Now let's talk about management. What happens after the investor owns the property? So they buy the property. Everything goes well. The property's rented up quickly, which is good. And you've got that rent guarantee in there for two months, or or is it and or the difference between that? Well, it's it's kind of and. But for one, I've never had a 
I don't think I've ever had a platinum person ever go beyond that two months and not have a tenant in there. So we feel pretty good about that. But it's not both of them, but it is, I guess, the two-month rental guarantee and then the difference between once a tenant is in there and the pro forma, if that makes sense. So let's talk about property management. Now, you have a, a sister company that is a property management company, or you have property management within the same company. I'm not exactly sure of the corporate structure, but people aren't required to use your property management, although they pretty much do all the time. What do you want to say about the management side? Well, we rent about 150 homes right now. I'm very closely working with the property manager. So if there's an issue to where you can't get a hold of them or whatever it may be, you can get a hold of me. So there are some benefits as far as communication goes by using us. I'm not affiliated in any way with the property management company, except that I just work with them all the time. I mean, right now, our, our renewal rate for tenants is about 85 to 90%. So to me, that says our property manager is doing a good job finding tenants, not just in the short term, but the long term. So I've been very pleased with how the majority of homes are going. There's a, a few exceptions here and there, but for the most part, I'd say you know, he's doing a great job finding good tenants and, and finding them quickly. Fantastic. Well, what else do you want to say just to conclude here about your market, your properties, anything else you want listeners to know? Certainly appreciate working with you guys. I feel like we've got a product with, with when you're doing 20% down, for example, you're, I don't think there will be any properties that would be over $20,000 total out of pocket. So that's no rehab of costs in addition to that or anything like that. That's, that's totally out of pocket. So I feel like that's very competitive. We're in a, a growing market and one that has great price points. So I, I think we've got a, a great product and certainly appreciate you guys working with us. And I can certainly say that our clients have had very good experiences in this market. So thank you for all you do and for your excellent follow-up. It is very much appreciated, Eric. Appreciate having you on the show. Thank you. What's great about the shows you'll find on jasonhartman.com is that if you want to learn how to finance your next big real estate deal, there's a show for that. If you want to learn more about food storage and the best way to keep those onions from smelling up everything else, there's a show for that. If you honestly want to know more about business ethics, there's a show for that. And if you just want to get away from it all and need to know something about world travel, there's even a show for that. Yep, there's a show for just about anything. Only from JasonHartman.com or type in Jason Hartman in the iTunes store. Atlanta is the capital and most populous city in the state of Georgia, as well as the urban core of one of the fastest growing metropolitan areas in the United States. Considered a top business city and a transportation hub, Atlanta is the world headquarters of the Coca-Cola Company, AT&T Mobility, and Delta Airlines. The surrounding area contains additional corporate headquarters, including Home Depot and UPS. Atlanta has the nation's third largest concentration of Fortune 500 companies, and more than 75% of the Fortune 1000 companies have a presence in the Atlanta metropolitan area. Our analysis of Atlanta as an investment opportunity will focus on demographics, the overall property market, and the emergence of attractive micro-markets. With a comprehensive network of freeways that radiate out from the city, residents rely on their cars as Interstate 285, a beltway locally known as the perimeter, which has come to mark the boundary between the interior of the region and its surrounding suburbs, mostly encircles the dominant mode of transportation in the region Atlanta. Three key attributes make Atlanta a tremendous opportunity for investors. These are favorable demographics, superior quality of life, and an attractive business climate. Any of these three factors can help an investment market, but the combination of all three creates an unparalleled opportunity in the Atlanta area. The combined metropolitan area for Atlanta has a population of 5.4 million people, which represents growth of 1.1 million people from 2000 through 2008. The population of Atlanta is expected to grow to 7.7 million residents by the year 2025. The driving force behind this rapid growth is the strong business environment and employment opportunities in and around the city. The median income for a household in the city was $47,464, and the median income for a family was $59,711. About 21.8% of the population and 17.2% of families lived below the poverty line. 
When combined with the low cost of living in Atlanta, many residents have significant amounts of disposable income that help support vibrant culture and entertainment options throughout the city. Atlanta is growing very quickly and has a very sizable affluent population that will only grow in relevance as more commerce concentrates in Atlanta. As an ideally placed business and transportation hub for the southeastern United States, Atlanta is ascending on a growth path while many former industrial cities are experiencing significant economic contraction. Atlanta is home to one of the largest concentrations of colleges and universities in the country. The city has more than 30 institutions of higher education, including the Georgia Institute of Technology, a predominant engineering and research university that's been ranked in the top 10 public universities since 1999 by U.S. News & World Report, and Georgia State University. Atlanta is also the home to four major league sports teams, plays host to the PGA Players Championship, and contains the world's largest aquarium in downtown Atlanta. One of the key attributes that attracts so many people to Atlanta is its superior quality of life. With a strong business environment, reasonable commute, extensive culture, and educational institutions, there is no shortage of opportunity for people of varying interests. As the unofficial capital of the Southeast United States, Atlanta represents a shining gem of opportunity. An example of Atlanta's importance is its 270 billion GDP, which represents nearly two-thirds of the Georgia economy. This is largely why Atlanta is among the top three major cities in relocation and growth. People are choosing relocation to Atlanta because of its superior business environment. The importance of Atlanta's business climate cannot be understated as there will be many companies redeploying resources out of high-tax states and into more business-friendly environments over the coming years. Atlanta is standing directly in the middle of this progress trajectory, and investors who are positioned to ride this wave can realize tremendous gains. Atlanta has a highly diverse base of employment. With nine Fortune 500 company headquarters in the city, there is no shortage of employment opportunity. This broad base creates much more economic stability for Atlanta than is experienced in many industrial cities that have become dependent on a small number of companies or industries. As the business hub of the southeastern United States, Atlanta can be counted on to continue on its growth trajectory for a considerable amount of time. Atlanta is one of eight U.S. cities classified as a Beta World City by a 2008 study at Loughborough University and ranks third in the number of Fortune 500 companies headquartered within city boundaries behind New York City, Houston, and Dallas. Several major national and international companies are headquartered in Atlanta or its nearby suburbs, including three Fortune 100 companies. The city of Atlanta possesses very attractive housing affordability and cost of living, being ranked the fourth best major metropolitan area for both housing affordability and cost of living. The attractiveness of Atlanta as an affordable market makes it an ideal focal point for the next wave of economic growth, as young professionals flee from highly taxed and highly regulated markets. The housing market in Atlanta has been damaged by the financial crisis, similar to most major metropolitan areas. The key difference is that the strong economy of Atlanta and continued population growth has created a large population of prospective renters. This presents a rare window of opportunity for investors to capture good cash flow, excellent return on investment, and favorable location in one of the fastest growing metropolitan areas in the country. Atlanta offers the opportunity for a tremendous ROI one-two punch. The first step is short-term cash flow on a superior investment property. The second piece is long-term appreciation from an investment that's located in a rapidly growing metropolitan area. There are multiple micro-markets in and around Atlanta that are very attractive at the current time. Are you ready to take advantage of them? The rehabilitation that is going into these properties looks like it belongs on a reality show. Many houses are being transformed from older, average-looking residences to new and attractive homes for the burgeoning population of professionals in the Atlanta area. These opportunities are very near the once-in-a-lifetime status, since Atlanta is expected to grow significantly in the near future and prices may rise to the point where investment in the area becomes much less lucrative than it is today. 
If you would like to learn more about the investment opportunities available in the Atlanta market, contact your investment counselor for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. In addition to the investment properties, ask your counselor about our coaching programs where they work alongside you to develop a holistic strategy that merges attractive investments, solid financial planning, exceptional education, and a strong focus on personal values to help achieve your goals now and into the future. We are ready to help you realize the success that you've always dreamed of. Are you ready to take the next step? Are you interested in a property outside of our network? Do you need a second opinion? No problem. Let Jason's experts evaluate the deal. For more information, go to jasonhartman.com now. This show is produced by the Hartman Media Company, all rights reserved. For distribution or publication rights and media interviews, please visit www.hartmanmedia.com or email media at hartmanmedia.com. Nothing on this show should be considered specific personal or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own, and the host is acting on behalf of Platinum Properties Investor Network, Inc., exclusively.